it's that time of year again. You guys are going to be seeing a lot of these in the next few months. A lot of people calling for no heat, general maintenance, and just to tune up a furnace. So I thought today we'd talk a little bit about how we can properly tune up furnaces and give people their money's worth. Last week we talked about flame sensors on a gas furnace and how to clean them and how to troubleshoot them. So I hope that was helpful to you. So today we're going to go through some more components on gas furnaces and try to help you out this winter to try to keep these gas furnaces running. So let's take a look at a typical gas furnace installation. I've always said that if a technician would take a picture of the furnace and the surrounding ductwork, I could probably diagnose and tell them what's wrong with the, with the system without even going to the job site. So let's stand back and see what we can see. The first thing we observe would be the filters. Most homeowners tell you that they religiously change their filters, and we know that that's usually not true. Here's a telltale sign, extra filters sitting on top of the return air plenum. I wonder if the filter's been changed in the last month or so. So airflow is critical to the proper operation of a gas furnace, so we want to make sure right off the bat that the filters are clean and we have good airflow. The next thing we want to look at is the venting. This vent pipe goes up one elbow and then it elbows back and out through a sidewall. So you want to make sure that the furnace is vented according to the manufacturer's specifications. Another thing we observe is that the combustion air for the furnace is being drawn from the space. Now normally this is okay and is approved by the manufacturer, but you need to take into consideration a couple of things. Number one, the environment that the furnace is living in. Usually furnaces are in a laundry room or in a workshop where there are caustic materials that are being used or dish soap or things that could damage the secondary heat exchanger. So if you're pulling the air from inside the home or inside the space, you want to make sure there's enough air and that it is good air that we're putting into the furnace. We also note that there's a hot water heater sitting next to the gas furnace. This hot water heater is also a gas appliance and it needs air for combustion. So is there sufficient air in this space to operate the furnace and the gas hot water heater? Looking at this pipe coming down, it looks like it's a makeup air vent, which is good as we're drawing the air for the furnace from the space and we also have a hot water heater. So we wanna make sure that we have enough combustion air to support combustion in both the gas furnace and the hot water heater. The next we, thing we observe is the condensate. It looks like the condensate from the furnace is being directed into a floor drain. So you want to make sure that the condensate is run correctly. The last thing you want to look at are the accessories. If there's a humidifier or if this is a propane application or some type of accessory is being added to the furnace. So before we even open up the furnace, we have a lot of things that we need to consider to make sure the furnace is operating correctly. So we mentioned condensate management. You need to make sure that when you're running your condensate off a furnace or a air conditioning coil, that you run it according to the manufacturer's specifications. Many tests have been run on modern coils and modern furnaces to find the positive and negative positions and how to best drain the condensate out of the air conditioning coil and the furnace itself. So make sure that you consult the installation guide for diagrams like this that show you the ways that you can run the condensate and the ways that you should not. Not following the manufacturer's rec recommendations will cause the condensate to collect in the air conditioning coil pan or to collect in the collector box of the furnace, shutting down the furnace and also could cause water damage to the home. Never use a shallow running trap like this. 
this will not properly trap the coil or the furnace and you will get water damage and problems down the road. After we've completed our initial observation of the furnace installation, we want to open up the doors and continue working on the furnace. One of the first things that we want to look at is the inducer motor. When a furnace is given a call for heat, this is the first device that starts up. The inducer motor's purpose is to provide induced draft through the secondary and primary heat exchanger in order for the furnace to operate correctly. Make sure that the blower wheel of the inducer motor is clean and make sure that the inducer is coming up to correct speed. This can be done by observing the pressure switches which have a certain number of water column inches that need to be made before the contacts in the pressure switch will make. If they are making, this means the inducer motor is coming up to proper speed. Make sure the pressure switches operate correctly as they are safeties for the correct operation of the furnace. The gas valve is another item that is most often misdiagnosed. I had a guy the other day who was condemning the gas valve and was ready to go get one and change it out and I asked him to check the voltage coming from the control board to the gas valve and he found that when the gas valve was dropping out that the voltage from the control board was dropping out. So it was not a gas valve issue, it was a control board issue. So properly diagnosing these components is very important to getting the job done correctly. Limits and safeties are seen by homeowners and some technicians as a nuisance, but these switches and safeties are designed to protect the furnace and protect the people that reside in the home that the furnace provides heat to. So whenever limits and safeties are tripping, there usually is a problem that you need to investigate and find out why this is happening and fix it. The burner section needs to be observed when the furnace is operating to make sure that you have a clean blue flame and that the flames are going down the tubes of the heat exchanger properly. Any kind of rollback or feathering flames could indicate a problem either with the induced draft motor or with the heat exchanger itself. Proper supply and manifold pressure is also necessary for the proper burning of the flame on the burner. I usually like to see the supply manifold pressure to be around 10 inches, anywhere from 8 to 10 inches. And then of course the manifold pressure is going to vary depending on what type of furnace this is and what type of gas you're using. So double check the data tag on the furnace to make sure that the manifold pressure is set correctly for the correct operation of the furnace. When the filters are not changed periodically, as they should be, the blower wheel can build up dust and corrosion. This will limit the efficiency of the blower wheel to move and circulate the air through the furnace. So make sure you double check the blower wheel to make sure that it's not uh, caked up with dust and debris and that it's moving the air as it's designed to. The blower motor needs to spin freely, needs to be drawing the proper amp draw, and it needs to be producing the CFM that is required for the furnace. So double checking the blower motor, whether it's a regular PSC motor or an ECM motor for proper operation is part of a furnace tune-up. Then the heat exchangers. They need to be examined on a regular basis at least twice a year to make sure that there are no holes or there's no problems, cracking, rust, and corrosion that needs to be addressed. The safety of the homeowners that have this furnace is at jeopardy here and you as a technician need to make sure that the heat exchangers are in good shape. The electrical to the furnace, most furnaces need a good ground to operate. So if you have control boards and things that are happening to the furnace that don't make sense, it could very well be that you've lost your ground. 
So make sure you have a good ground to each one of these furnaces. And last but not least, the door switch. Most of you guys have devices to bypass these or you put duct tape or electrical tape over them. Whenever you're done working on the furnace and troubleshooting it, make sure you take those devices off and take your tape off. If a homeowner would happen to open the door and you've left a tape on this door switch and they stick their hands into high voltage, it could become a real liability issue. So make sure that you return the furnace to proper operating condition once you're done examining and troubleshooting the furnace. So here you see the heat exchangers of a modern uh, gas furnace. On the left you see the primary cells that should be examined for holes and cracks. On the right you see the secondary heat exchanger which you would find in a 90% furnace to extract more heat out of the air as it passes across the heat exchanger. These heat exchangers, like I said, need to be examined periodically and definitely before each heating season, you should double check the heat exchangers for any cracks or holes to make sure that they are operating correctly. This of course is a totally corroded heat exchanger and if you find something like this, uh, you definitely need to replace it. Whenever a technician calls in and is working on a gas furnace where he suspects a bad heat exchanger, they are reluctant to open the furnace up as that's a major operation to try to check the heat exchanger. So by doing a combustion test, we can try to determine whether we need to open the furnace up for further examination. Many technicians are reluctant to do this also, as it requires drilling a hole in the vent pipe about two feet away from the inducer motor to take the reading. If this reading is above 200 parts per million, it's time to open up the furnace and see what shape the heat exchanger is in. Once you have completed the test, there's a couple of ways that you can seal this hole that you had to drill for your combustion meter testing. You can use a hose clamp and silver tape by putting the silver tape across the hole and then using the pipe clamp to seal it and hold it in place. Or there's also pipe plugs that are available to put in holes that you drill in PVC. So our main goal in tuning up a furnace is to make sure that we have a good blue flame and that it is being drawn down the heat exchanger tube the way that it should be for proper combustion. We want to make sure that we have the correct gas rate or the gas pressure and the proper primary air so that we can achieve this flame characteristic. Another check that we usually make on a gas furnace is the temperature rise. On all gas furnaces, there is a range of temperature rise that is listed on the data tag of the furnace. By taking the return air temperature and the supply air temperature down the ductwork away from the radiation heat of the heat exchanger, we can subtract these two and get our temperature rise. This will tell us if we are in the range that this furnace is designed to operate in. Also note that just because we have the proper temperature rise doesn't mean that there may be some turbulence in the supply or the return ductwork that is causing the furnace to trip on a limit switch. So make sure you check out the ductwork and how the air is flowing through the furnace and make sure that you don't have any turbulence that is causing issues. We mentioned earlier accessories that need to be installed on certain gas applications. I got a call the other day from a tech who was working on a furnace that was tripping on the limit switch and it was running hot. And we determined that it was on propane gas but had never been converted to propane. So there are propane conversion kits that usually consist of the change of orifices for each burner and then usually a spring that goes into the gas pressure adjustment port on the gas valve. So make sure that all the accessories that you need for your installation have been done properly 
and that the gas furnace is set up correctly for proper operation. Go to arefco.com for more videos, like, subscribe, and check back every week for new videos.